Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to use a string and a pin to draw a one point perspective. The first thing I did here was just drawing a square in any angle that I chose. Now I'm going to start drawing the furniture. So you may see that this table that I'm drawing here is slightly off the corner and that is because this tabletop is higher than the floor and the higher an object is, is gonna be farther away from the vanishing point. Now you can draw all the details that you want on top of the table. You see me here drawing a lamp, then a book, then an open book, and you can draw whatever you want. But here is where it gets interesting. When you wanna draw the verticals like that leg of the table right there, then is when you start using the string you'll see that the string lets you know the exact angle of every single line that goes to the vanishing point. How to know the height, or in this case, the length of those lines? Well, the first thing I drew was the table, so I am doing everything else in proportion to that table. I usually draw chairs from top to bottom to make sure that I don't draw lines that are later gonna be covered by other lines. Here I'm starting to draw the bed, it's just a simple mattress with no headboard and a bed covering. So I'm just drawing scribbly lines that mimic fabric. Then I'm gonna draw a side table beside the bed. And adding as many details as possible is always what makes these drawings very beautiful. Now check this out, I'm gonna draw a library so the first thing that I'm gonna draw is the bottom line of that library, the one that touches the floor. Then with the strings. I'll draw its height on both sides and then I'll finish the rectangle on the top. Now I can draw the thickness of the library borders which is just drawing parallel lines to the ones I drew before and I can proceed to draw its divisions, verticals and horizontals. The horizontals I do parallel to the line that defines the wall that the library is leaning on and for the verticals, of course, I'm using the string. Then add as many details as you want inside the library. For example, the depth of each one of the squares or books or picture frames, anything that you want to draw. And you can do it in any angle since these things that you put inside a library are not always in perfect position horizontally or vertically. A couple of details also in the places that you can never see is always fun. You'll see me repeating the same exact process for every single object that I draw. Just have fun and imagine all types of objects that you can put inside a bedroom and it's always nice to have a story. In this case, for example, I am drawing the bedroom of a teenager so he's got his desk and his bed and his library and I'm drawing here a TV and of course he'll have video games so I'm drawing a video console and the controllers and video games and all that comes with them. And now let's draw a door. So. I am drawing the verticals of the frames here on both sides so you define the width of the door. Then you can go ahead and draw the thickness of the door frame just with a single line parallel to the first one and then you draw the depth of the frame. And you can start drawing that bottom line which marks the beginning of the door and then you can draw as many details as you want. In this case I am drawing one of those doors that has two square panels one in the bottom and one in the upper part. Just a simple design. Once you finish drawing all the objects in the room and all the objects that are leaning against the walls, then you can draw the actual floor. And I'm drawing a double line because the first line is the line that actually defines the floor and the second line is the baseboard, which always goes in the place where the floor meets the walls. At this point you can also draw the four corners of the room and of course for that you're gonna use the string because those are all vertical lines. 
What I'm drawing here is a window, so you'll see the verticals go to the vanishing point again, and the horizontal you have to start at the height that you decide that your window is going to start. Then go ahead and finish the window with the design that you chose. In this case, I'm just doing simple squares and a vertical division in the middle. And you have to be careful because the squares closer to the floor are smaller than the squares closer to the ceiling. And this is just a decoration line that I decided to draw at that height. You can see how the height transfers in the corners from one wall to the other. Couple more details like that piece of art hanging right there in the wall and it's time to remove the pin. Of course you're gonna have a hole so what I do is just rub it back to its place on the bottom and then draw something on top. The very last thing that I do is draw the boards on the floor or the carpet and that's it. If you enjoyed this tutorial make sure to comment, follow, like and share.